Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kiva and in today's video we're talking about interior design in the COVID era. So home decor and home decorating has seen a very, very huge increase in popularity during this pandemic, but we're really, really struggling. So we're gonna talk about the reasons why and what we can do about it in today's video. So let's get right into it. So today's video is not about one's views on COVID or anything like that. We are not talking about that. We are not entertaining that. We are not gonna debate about that down in the comments. But something we can all agree on is that the COVID pandemic has impacted how we live, how everyone lives. But today in particular, I wanna talk about interior design because not only has the interior design industry seen a very huge increase in business we've also seen a lot of struggles due to the supply chain so let's kind of talk about why interior design is struggling during covid So the first reason why the interior design industry is kind of struggling during COVID is due to the COVID restrictions. So think about it. All of the things that you want to have in your home, someone has to make. Something has to make it. And there has to be a person there to operate that machine. But we have social distancing. We have restrictions about how many people can be in spaces. That means that things are not getting pumped out as quickly as they once were. There are not thousands of people sitting in a factory anymore making your sofa, making your chairs. They're trying to keep people safe, which is a good thing. But that means that those things that you want, they're not getting produced at the rate that they used to be produced at. So that means that there are definitely, definitely some delays. There just aren't enough people to fulfill the amount of need. Now, not only are we struggling in terms of actually manufacturing the products, we are also struggling with the fact that more people want the products. So as I've kind of alluded to so far in today's video, during the pandemic, people have become really, really interested in interior design. I'll even say it, that's how I really became interested in interior design because I was sitting at home and I was staring at my four walls and I was like, what can I do? How can I make this feel at home? Because before the pandemic, most of us, we were out and about. The house is someplace we kind of came to eat our meals and go to sleep, right? But now it's the place where we work, we play, we entertain, we sleep, we do everything in our homes. So now we really, really, really want to make it look beautiful. But it's you and millions and millions of other people who are feeling the exact same way. So so if a million people are ordering the cloud sofa, that means that it's going to take a really long time to produce a million of those cloud sofas, right? So even though you put in your order early, there's so many other people also putting in their orders and there's just not the ability to keep up with that demand because the demand has increased. We don't have the same number of people in the factories and manufacturing the items and there are more items in general that just need to be manufactured. So no matter what, at this point in time, there are guaranteed to be delays in your furniture, whether you're ordering from a luxury store or a more affordable store. Not only are we now asking for so many products, but there are a finite number of trucks and boats and modes of transportation that we can use to actually get these products to your home. There are delivery people who have to be working. They can't be sick for them to deliver those products to your home, right? And we're delivering furniture, but those same delivery people are delivering vaccines, other home products, products for literally every other industry, right? And they're all fighting to be in the same ports at the same places. So it's really, really hard to unload those products, get them to land and get them to their location, um, you know, just to be shipped off to you. So there are a lot of steps that kind of go into your furniture being manufactured and it getting to your home. And something you cannot forget is a lot of the furniture that you do purchase is not manufactured here in the United States. Some brands, yes, but they're coming from abroad. So we also have to take into consideration what's going on abroad, not just how the United States is handling the pandemic, but how all the other countries are handling the pandemic. So there are so, so, so many things that are actually going into you being able to furnish your home during this pandemic. So now that we know why interior design is kind of struggling during this period, let's talk about the results of that. So actually the interior design industry as a whole has seen a really huge increase, right? Because a lot of people, as I've stated earlier, they want the interior design help. They want people to help them make their homes look beautiful and make their houses feel like homes, right? What we're actually talking about in today's video is kind of how it feels on your end, your end as the consumer, as the client. So let's kind of talk about the results of the pandemic for you. You. 
So what I see most often is I see people kind of moving into the fast furniture. And I think it's something that we should really talk about. Even my time on YouTube, I've talked a lot about fast furniture because I like it because it's cheap, but fast furniture as a whole isn't a good thing. If you're not sure what fast furniture is, think about Ikea. Think about places where you can just do a hop, skip, and a jump, and you can get that piece of furniture the same day. Now, if you're working with a small budget or you like to DIY things, you like to hack things, I think Ikea is an incredible resource. I'm not saying anything is bad with Ikea. You guys know that I love it, but it is fast furniture, right? It comes with a lot of waste. Everything is very, very basic and everything looks the same, right? So it results in a lot of repetition, um, a lot of waste, and a lot of pretty low quality furniture, right? No one has ever said, wow, this Ikea furniture is so high end. I'm just going to furnish my entire house in it because I'd rather do that instead of, you know, buy something from a luxury store. That really doesn't happen. Again, I'm not smack talking Ikea. I love it, but we all know that some of the pieces wobble a little bit. You know, there are a lot of risks that come with that furniture, but that's what people are settling for. If you've been to an Ikea warehouse recently, you can actually see they're even struggling themselves. And this really speaks to my earlier point. Ikea, you're saying, why doesn't Ikea have things? It's cheap. It's fast furniture. What's going on? Ikea products are not manufactured in the United States, so they are actually struggling with customs, right? You have to think about what goes into getting those items from abroad into the United States. These pieces of furniture have to go through customs. If that is delayed, you're going to be delayed in getting your pieces. But in general, those pieces are getting into the United States faster than some other pieces, or especially the ones that are not manufactured here. So that means that there's been a huge increase in that fast furniture. That's why we've seen the increase in people going to Walmart, to Target, to Ikea for furniture items. And these are people who don't necessarily have to shop at those stores. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm talking about people who could afford to shop at more luxury stores, but aren't because those things are readily available. The next thing I've witnessed as a result of the, the impact of COVID on the design industry is that I see a lot of people really getting frustrated and kind of giving up on design, right? So you're getting so excited, you're watching the YouTube videos, you're here on my channel, you're getting inspired, you're looking at Instagram, you're looking at Pinterest, you're reading those coffee table books you purchased from Home Goods, which is fantastic, but you've been so inspired, but you're really having a hard time kind of executing your design plan. And that results in you giving up, right? You're just like, ugh, it's gonna take so long, I don't know what to do, I'm just going to abandon ship, right? So I understand that inclination. Um, it can be so frustrating looking at those delivery times. You're like, oh, what if I don't even want it at that point in time? Is it going to even be worth it? I don't know. So you just kind of give up. But when you do give up, you actually just prolong the amount of time you're uncomfortable in your own home. Having furniture, creating, creating a style, even if your style is really cold or off-putting to some people, having a style that makes you feel at home is invaluable, right? You really, really need to feel at home in your space or else it's not conducive to feeling safe, feeling productive, um, and feeling good, right? And that's how we want to feel, especially since this pandemic has really transformed how we interact with other people and how we experience life. So finding some joy somewhere is so important. So don't give up on your design just because you're kind of overwhelmed with those displays. But now we're going to talk about a few solutions that I have for you in how to really successfully navigate designing your home during this time. Now let's talk solutions and in this segment of today's video I'm going to talk from my perspective as an interior stylist as somebody who actually kind of works with the vendors and I'm also going to speak as a consumer right because I also am in the process of furnishing my own home so I'm going to come at you with two perspectives and I want you to be able to understand the entire thing so the first solution to this problem is I want you to manage your expectations and by that I mean I just want you to have all of the knowledge possible when you're making your decisions and that's kind of the point of today's video. I hope that you walk away from today's video actually knowing a little bit more about why the home industry is kind of struggling and not let that dissuade you, right? You have seen these delays everywhere. You can't find the paper towels. You can't find the toilet paper. There's even a Nutella delay right now, right? So you have this knowledge now and you know that knowledge is power. So it shouldn't necessarily tell you, oh, like I'm not going to do this. Your furniture is going to come one day. You just kind of have to manage your expectations about it. This means if you're buying a new home, if
if you are going to a new apartment, part of managing your expectations is saying to yourself, hey, Joe, um, your house is not going to look perfect at the end. Let's find a way in the meantime to feel comfortable in this space while also designing for the future. So that means if you're moving to a new space, please don't get rid of all of your old furniture. It doesn't matter if it's the same bed you've had since college and you're over it. Take that bed with you. Make sure that you have furniture items to at least occupy the spaces so it doesn't feel like you're living in an empty space because that is so very uncomfortable. Manage your expectations in that way. Bring all of your existing furniture with you to your new space and then phase it out as the new pieces come. Make sure that your your again your house already feels like a home until those perfect things come in. I think what I've seen happen to clients is they kind of get rid of all their stuff because they're like new home new me I'm ready and then they're kind of sitting on the floor on their butts and they're so uncomfortable. So maybe extend your lease a bit a little bit longer. See if you can stay with somebody else. Maybe keep saving up for your dream home if you know you're placing your orders and you don't know when those things are going to come. What I've had clients do all the time people come to me they say Kiva I am building this house I'm building a house I want you to design it what are we going to do I say all right can I come out there can I take the measurements do you have a floor plan for me what information do you have for me so that we can start placing these orders right now instead of waiting until those four walls are up right because the house is going to take a long time to be built but that sofa is also going to take a long time to be built now another part of managing your expectations is also knowing that you can't get frustrated with the people at the store there's literally nothing they can do about it yelling at the lady in crate and barrel who's just trying to do her job is not going to make your sofa come fast it's not about anyone having a bad attitude anymore and these things used to happen I, I know this it's not about someone having a bad attitude it's not about someone just feeling like they don't want to deliver something they physically cannot do it so managing your expectations is so very important now the next piece of advice I want to provide you is to think about non-traditional interior design services so I want to talk about this again as an interior stylist myself so when I started my design business it was primarily virtual and I was helping people kind of add to what already exists and that's honestly what I want you to look for during this time a lot of people they say hey Kiva I want full service design I want to you know design style my house from the ground up and I say well designing your house for the ground up at this point in time it might take two years and might take three years right and that leads to a lot of disappointment and a lot of settling so what I want you to do instead of maybe looking for that full service design because again that does cost money and you're paying for a service without really getting the the tangible gratification from it right and I do understand that right you're like okay I've paid this person all this money but my house is still empty like what am I paying them this money for I just I you know I wrote a check for all of this furniture but I can't see the furniture where is my money going I worked really hard for this okay Okay? So I understand that that's happening. So what we can do is go for those non-traditional interior design services. Instead of full service design, let's find someone who can assist us during our process. Maybe you want to look at your vintage store. Maybe you want to get some things that are fast fashion. Maybe you want to find a sofa on Facebook marketplace, right? Or a secondhand shop. And then you're going to have a stylist or designer come in and say, okay, I got this secondhand piece of furniture. What new things can we put in that are in stock and put them in my space, right? You should look for someone who can help you with what already exists not just someone who can build something from the ground up for you because those are two different skills when it comes to interior design some people can create really beautiful spaces from scratch and some people can supplement things that already exist right because when you're working with items that already exist you kind of have to blend design styles it's very rare that someone has an entire uh, collection of furniture that's all one style right or that perfectly matches the style they want in the new house so you have to have someone who's like oh this pillow is going to merge this style and this style and it's going to work with this style that you already have. So maybe get an interior designer that's going to work for you more so as a consultant instead of as someone who's going to spearhead your project. That's going to mean that you can work together instead of giving the control entirely over to your designer so that you do feel like you have some autonomy in the project and so that you do feel like things are moving along, right? So that's a shift that I've had with a lot of my clients. Instead of saying, hey, let's do full service design, I say, hey, you seem like you really want your project done right now. And if we do this, the the linear way it's going to take a bit so what I've started to do with clients is we, we have weekly meetings right we'll, we'll come up with this plan where we have a series of meetings that we do together right and we'll just check in I'll be like okay we found these things together did you order them yes did they come yes did you find something while you were out shopping yes and then we sit in these sessions together and we mood board and we make things match and we look around the space 
and kind of make new things and old things blend. This allows you to keep shopping and your designer to keep shopping. And when you're doing full service design, I'll tell you that's not really what happens, right? Because if you've paid someone to shop for you, they should be shopping for you, right? You should be relaxing. So this allows you to both work to get you comfortable sooner. The next piece of advice I wanna give you is to not make rash decisions. And I don't want you to make rash decisions because you tend to regret them, right? So you're like, oh, I'll just get this table. I'll just get this sofa. I'll get this. It's in stock. It looks nice. And we make these rash decisions and then we buy things that we don't want. And again, things aren't coming um, next week like they used to unless you're buying things from like a Wayfair, right? Or an Amazon. Things aren't coming next day. You're making a rash decision on something that doesn't come for 12 weeks, right? So, so you're waiting um, quite a number of months, right, for this piece to come and then you don't even like it. And then you have to find a way to get it back to the store. Then you have to pay for that return shipping. Um, there are a lot of hidden costs and there's a lot of time that elapses when we make these rash decisions. So what I want you to do is approach design with a really, really, you know, linear plan, right? So whether you're doing that with a designer or by yourself, I need you to do your space planning. I need you to mood board. I need you to look for that inspiration so you actually know exactly what you want. You need to make an educated decision about furniture so that you're not buying something, waiting 12 weeks for it to come, not liking it when it finally does come after it's been pushed back for more weeks, having to figure out how to schlep it back to the store and then starting from square one. Making these rash decisions actually prolongs your design time by a lot because there's so many returns going on, there's so many hidden fees that your budget decreases and the amount of time it takes for your product to be completed increases, right? Because we're placing new orders and we're placing new orders and we're placing new orders, right? So on the flip side, the other thing I see people do a lot of the time during this pandemic is procrastinate. And procrastination is your worst enemy. And I, I honestly believe procrastination is your worst enemy in all facets of life, guys. I was a kid in a, uh, middle school, high school, college who did the homework the day they got. <laughs> I've always been like that. Procrastination is your worst enemy. When you procrastinate, when you're buying your furniture, you're just delaying the inevitable. You're just pushing that delivery date back further. Clients say to me, well, maybe if I wait, they'll move it up. I'm, they're not. <laughs> they are not going to move it up. We just do not have the means to move up your delivery. Even if you know a guy who knows a guy, they can't move up your delivery. They cannot control the ports for you, right? So don't say, oh, I'm going to mull on this, this chair. Now, if you're not sure if you love the chair, please mull on it. Please think about it. But if you know you want something and you're just like, Ugh, I don't really want to, you know, pull the trigger because I don't like this delay, just pull the trigger. Just pull the trigger. I promise you, once you do it, sometimes things actually end up coming before they intend to come. It'll be a little happy surprise for you, but just make those decisions because then you're just, again, increasing the amount of time you're uncomfortable in your own home. I also want you to go and try the pieces that you're interested in in store. So I know that not every store has the perfect items that you want to see on display, but I want you to do your best to go see these pieces in store because again, now we're really relying upon online shopping and online shopping is really fun, but it can also be really bad because things just don't look the same in person. Let me tell you a personal anecdote. I had this fantastic client and she really, really wants a nice Persian rug, right? So when we were looking at the ones online, they look one color and they arrived, they were a different color. So then we, we just drove out to uh, a rug dealer, right? And he was like, you know, due to the fibers, due to the colors, the coloring is always going to be off. Just buy it in person. And we found rugs and we looked there and we were able to really narrow down what she was interested in. And we're just a few steps away from buying something, right? So what I want you to do is go in person and actually look at those products to make sure that they look the way that you think they look before you order them, right? If you don't see the per things in person, you have no idea if you actually like like them. Um, that happens to me all of the time. I'm like, I don't know if I like this sofa. Uh, is it the right color or not? Then either I don't buy it or I buy something and I don't actually like it. And this, this can be an arduous task, but think about your furniture. Think about these things when you're going on vacation, when you're going on trips, right? We took a trip to an art show to see Kadir Boli. And when we were there, we also stopped at our house to see a piece that we were thinking about getting because our local art house didn't have it. It was just, you know, a little detour from what we were already doing, but I was able to see that piece of furniture in person to make sure that I liked it. Now, if you can't go to your local showroom and see those pieces, be sure to order those swatches um, of wood, of whatever, of fabric, order those swatches. Sure, they cost $8, maybe they cost some money, but it's actually gonna save you a lot of money long-term when it comes to that return shipping and handling. So definitely do that, order those swatches. Again, it's gonna help you make a better decision because the way a piece of furniture looks, the way a fabric looks is really impacted by the space it's in, the lighting, the color, of the walls, the amount of furniture in that space. So again, we wanna make as educated decisions as possible. Another solution for you during this 
really difficult time is to go to the outlets. So a lot of your favorite stores, Crate and Barrel, Pottery Barn, Restoration Hardware, pretty much any store, they have an outlet. They definitely have an outlet, whether that be an online outlet or an outlet in a local area, right? And we are all beautifully connected via social media. There's always someone you can reach out to who has that Pottery Barn outlet nearby who can go take a, gl um, a glance for you before you make that trek to that outlet. Look at those outlets for those bigger pieces of furniture. And this is actually kind of interesting. Since a lot of people are getting frustrated with those delays, instead of those companies bringing back those big pieces of furniture back to their original warehouse, they're actually actually shipping those pieces to their outlets. So instead of getting that one arm of a sofa, you're actually getting these huge, massive, big sofas in those outlets. So you can get that huge designer sofa you've always wanted entirely from the outlet at a discounted rate. And you can get it immediately. Sure, you have to kind of balance the cost with, you know, having to run a U-Haul and get some buddies to help you out. But if you're really worried about getting things right now, this is a fantastic, fantastic option for you. So go to those outlets and make connections with people who have access to outlets. Join those Facebook groups. There are tons and tons of interior design Facebook groups where people know where those outlets are. They're always there looking for you. That's Foster those relationships so you can have people looking out for the furniture pieces that you need. Now, don't do this in you know, your local neighborhood watch group. That's an inappropriate use of that resource. But I mean, those interior design groups, those home decor groups, look out for people near those outlets so that they can help you find the things that you need. And last but not least, technology is amazing. And a lot of your favorite stores, they actually have new in-stock sections of their websites. And that means if you click on the in-stock button, you can just see items that are ready to ship right now. So they're more likely to get here within the next month. So if you have to be an in-stock only shopper, know that about yourself and just go to those parts of the websites. Don't even go to the parts of the websites where they have the custom furniture or they have the pieces that are going to take a long time. Save yourself the disappointment, save yourself the frustration and just shop the in stock section. Now, if you're working with a designer, also say that to your designer, hey, when you're looking for inventory, please only look for things that are available right now. That transparency with your designer is gonna save both of you a lot of time. It also, you have to think about, designers don't just find furniture like that, right? They have to look based upon your dimensions, your lifestyle, your coloring. So it might take them three weeks to find furniture for one of your rooms, right? So if you say, oh, I don't want the furniture because it's not gonna come yet. If you're more upfront about that with your designer from day one, they're able to select furniture that works best for you initially instead of you know finding something that's not going to come for a bit you're kind of frustrated then they have to take another three weeks and another three weeks so being transparent about your timeline is going to allow your designer to help you to the very best of their ability because I want to speak on something so what I see happen um, sometimes is a client will say oh I don't, I don't care how long things take I've said this to I'm like oh I don't care like I can wait and then one night I'm up at like 12 a.m. and I'm like I can no longer wait <laughs> I have to get this right now so what do I do? I go browsing, I do a little side shopping, right? And I'm like, oh, I found a sofa. So you say to your, your designer, oh, I found a sofa. And they're like, okay, wait, I designed this entire room around this one sofa, right? If we do this sofa, everything else is gonna have to shift, which is fine, right? But that still does delay your project. While it might seem like maybe you're helping, yes, you're getting more comfortable, but it is shifting the entire design. So that requires everyone to be flexible, which is totally okay. But again, it still might lengthen your timeline. So if everyone is really clear up front and upfront about their expectations, I think we can get you feeling comfortable in your space a lot swifter. And you also have to keep in mind with the managing the expectations, if we're finding places from secondhand shops, we're finding things along the way, which is beautiful, we're saving money and we're saving time. That also means that that end product may not look like that original rendering you received. And part of design, if you're not very creative, you're like, well, if it doesn't look like this rendering, is it really complete? If it doesn't look just like this thing that I once saw, is it complete? It is complete. We've just kind of evolved in the vision. So being cognizant of that is going to be very, very powerful. Okay, you guys, that's it for today's video. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And be sure to check out my other videos. I have tons of advice on how to design effectively during this time, how to shop online, and how to find the perfect resources for you. Until next time, have a beautiful day.